first have a look at the man from Pretoria. Yeah, Kurtzer comes to Britain with a strong reputation and a pretty useful record too. 24 KOs in 36 fights and he's avenged both those defeats and he knows Lacusta will be difficult to put away. Well, every fight that I fight is a very, very important fight to me. Uh, I mean, winning uh, the fight is a uh, step closer to the world title and that's what we're actually looking for, uh, to get a shot at the world title. So this fight is very, very important to me. Kurtz's record is proof of his punching power. His last opponent, Kimul Odum, a former US international, lasted 10 rounds, but then succumbed to the accuracy and wicked force of Kurtz's fists. Odum never made the final bell. He's a very experienced fighter, and I think at this stage of my career, it's a good guy to fight now in Ken Lacusta, uh, because he knows all the things in the ring, and uh, I think this is a very, very good fight to me. But I always like England, and uh, I think it's going to be great to fight here. There's Pierre Kutzer just moments before he gets into the ring against Ken Lacusta, and. Pretty apprehensive he looks, pretty concentrated, terrific record, and he's got fearsome yeah. punching power. Tremendous punching power there he showed in that last fight. Uh, he's only 29 years of age, 36 fights, uh, 24 KOs. A very powerful, dangerous man as he showed in that punching. Okay, let's have a look now at his opponent, Ken Lacusta from Canada. Lacusta's been a pro for 12 years, and his list of opponents reads like a who's who of world heavyweights. Trevor Burbick. Frank Bruno, Michael Dokes, and George Foreman. So how does he look forward to taking on Kurtzer? I just know that he's a rated fighter, and he's fought a couple of people that I've worked with, and uh, I've heard some uh, talk about him in the US and in Canada, that he's a pretty good fighter, and uh, I've really come prepared to uh, uh, take on the task. Pierre Kurtzer has no easy fight Saturday, and I, I certainly don't have one either, so I think if I get out and do my things that uh, I do well, possibly things might go my way. Last year, one punch knocked the punching preacher to his formidable foundations. Oh, big by off the In the end, though, Foreman stopped him in three. I fought George Foreman in the, about in July of this year, and, uh, or last year, and I figured that if I can go past five rounds, and I really had a chance, and uh, we made him miss a lot in the first three rounds, and he caught me with a real big left hook in the third round, and, you know, I, I had opened up a cut under his eye in the second round, and uh, I caught him with some good shots, but I really have to give him a lot of credit because he's not the youngest guy in the world, but he's a real hard puncher, and uh, he, he pushes you around a lot in there, so it makes it tough for anybody that boxes him. I feel that me and Pierre Coates are being around the same size. Uh, really is going to be a, a, a lot to my advantage. I feel that I can just uh, maybe turn this thing around in round seven and up, and uh, I'm looking for a real tough fight, and I didn't come here uh, for any other reason. I come here to do real well, and the people back home in Canada are expecting me to do real well, and uh, I've been backed by everybody back there, and I really want to do well. Ken Lacusto talks a good fight. Has he got a chance to? Well, yeah, in the early rounds, any heavyweight's got a chance if he throws a big enough punch. So he's got to do it in the early rounds. He has 15 losses and 36 fights. I can't see him uh, winning unless he's going to knock the guy out with a lucky punch in the first two rounds. OK, let's see how he fares. Let's go ringside now and join our commentators. For Holland, Fred Royers. Hello, Fred. For Germany, Hans Joachim Rauschenbach. And for everyone else, Ian Dark and, of course, Henry Cooper. Good atmosphere here at ringside. <laughs> and a sellout crowd in the Thornaby on Tees Pavilion. And a chance to see the world rated Pierre Kurtzer in England. He arrived yeah, here so. saying he'd never seen he's snow before. But he's not only got to win this, he's got to win this looking good because world class opponents, quite frankly, knock out Ken Lacusto. Will Kurtzer do it? We'll see in a moment. Gentlemen, please. Ladies and gentlemen. John Spensley and Cedric Kushner proudly present a 10-round international heavyweight contest, a duration of three minutes in each round. And introducing to you, on my left, boxing from the blue corner, is the former Canadian heavyweight champion, 
Will you welcome here on Teesside, Ken Lacusta? <laughs> and now on my right, boxing from the red corner, he's from Pretoria, South Africa, the South African heavyweight champion, rated fifth in the world, a Teesside welcome for Pierre Kutza. Gentlemen, please, at the weigh-in at one o'clock today, Lacusta scaled 15 stone two pounds, Kotsa scaled 15 stone six pounds. Your referee for the contest is Mr. Arnold Bryson. Your officials appointed by the British Boxing Control are as previous contests. Thank you. So, 10 rounds, Pierre Kurtzer in the blue trunks there, the two-tone blue with the moustache, ranked number seven by the WBA, number five by the IBF, and with politics opening the way for a South African return in world sport, maybe he will be able to entice the world champion, whoever it may be, after the big fights coming up to South Africa to fight him. But he's got to look good here against Ken Lacusta, whose record is, well, indifferent, quite honestly. Kutzer, big man, six feet four inches, and Lacusta is heavily outreached. So a bit of pressure on uh, Pierre Kurtzer here to do the business in an impressive fashion. Lacusta, who's been in with a lot of world-class opponents, but he's lost to them all, and on most occasions he's been stopped or knocked out, Henry. Yeah, well, Kuster, he looks the part, doesn't he? I mean, he's a uh, perfect build, you know, 6'3 and a half, 6'4, he's 15 stone plus. Uh, perfect build, so, I mean, let's hope he's got it in him. He, he's rated fifth, he's got it all there, we've got to see him do it now. Yeah. Kuster was telling me in the week he's very up for this fight. He feels he can cause a shock. He's on a special diet prepared by a nutritionist. And there could be a key factor here just how ambitious he is in this fight, whether he's here just to last a few rounds or whether he really does fancy his chances a bit. Yeah, well, he hasn't shown a lot so far, Lacusta, has he? He's just been content with going backwards at the moment, but, well, there was one or two little short uppercut punch type punches in that little corner there. But he looks as though he has got a punch with the little clip we see of him when he fought, fought hey, George hey. Foreman. He's got it there if he can land it. Lacusta, who's 35, comes from Edmonton in Canada. In his last fight, he lost his Canadian heavyweight title to Conroy Nelson, stopped in the seventh round back in December. And actually retired for a while at one stage, a year or two back. British fight fans may remember him in his last visit here, knocked out in two rounds by Frank Bruno. And he looks seemingly defensive and cautious in this opening round. Kurtzler just seems to be biding his time, doesn't he, at the moment? Well, that's it. He, I think um, he's just feeling himself out and feeling his opponent out in this round. I mean, I mean, South Africa, they've had, they've produced one or two good heavyweights in the past, but in recent years, they've had, what, um, Kutzia, what was his name? Kutzia, he was um, about the last good one they had. And proves that they had a fellow called Johnny Arthur in my day and one or two others, so George Cook before that. So they, they produced good big men occasionally. Well, Lacusta coming in with a couple of sharp punches of his own, and there's a little nick under the right eye of Kurtz, uh, Kurtzer. Yeah. Blood coming from that. That shouldn't be too much of a factor, the blood not running into the eye. That's when it's a real problem for boxers, when it starts to obscure yeah. the vision. But that's a nasty gash under that eye. Yeah. Looks a well, bit nasty. So Kurtzer, that might just have shaken his confidence a little bit, that yeah. blood. Well, he's got a good man in his call now, Willie, uh, Willie Tau, and Vic Tau, his brother, Alan Tau, I think that is, and uh, he's been in the boxing game well, for 30, 40 years, a great, knows all about the cuts business, so uh, you'll see him go to work there. Yeah, yeah that's Alan tau -il, who is from the famous South African fighting family that Henry was mentioning, uh, including brothers Vic, he was a fair old fighter, Vic wasn't was he? Vic was um, the, the oldest, and then Willie came on after him, and yeah, yeah. And that's his son, by the way, Alan Tawil Jr., also in the corner Oh, in the with corner him. as well, is and There's it? that gash underneath the right eye, and uh, yeah. that looks a bit nasty, doesn't it? It's nasty, as long as it doesn't get 
worse because it won't um, it won't problem he won't have a problem there because say hey, it's just running down his cheek but it doesn't look good does it you don't want blood in the in the first round of a fight like this Ken Lacusta, whose defeats in world-class opposition, apart from that one against Bruno, including a first-round knockout by Razor Ruddock, who is soon to meet Mike Tyson. Ruddock, another Canadian-based fighter. Lacusta has a reach problem here. He's much the shorter man, six feet one and a half inches against six feet four of Kurtzer. Kurtzer, a former policeman, and that's a nice body shot from the South African who will be looking, I think, just to step it up a gear in the second round. Yeah, well, it'd be interesting now to see if, um, you know, it must give Lacusta a, a little bit of a, a, a buzz when he sees a car. And it'd be interesting if he could work on it and, and open it up again. And then it's on the other side. He's, well, man, there's some good punches coming in. He's started bleeding down, but he's going to town on him. Yeah. He's landed with some fair head punches now, Kurtzer, in this round, and Lacusta looked a bit open as some of those came thudded in. And a nice jab there. He's trying to open him up with the jab for maybe a big right to follow. Kurtzer with 34 wins, 24 of them by knockout, and only two defeats in his career, and both of those were avenged. And low, he's doubled Lacusta up a little bit there with those shots, and the Canadian... Looking to cover yeah. up. There was a good right cross and a left hook, wasn't it, that, that uh, caught him. And uh, you know, I think he's realised he's got a cut and he might try put the pressure on, see if he can stop this a bit quick. He wouldn't want to go too long and get it any worse. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, he's got it. Oh, and again. Right. Oh, Lacusta here. This is going to be it here, I think. Lacusta's gone here. And what is a miracle how he's still on his feet having taken those. This must be the finish. It is all over. Yeah. Second round, and an impressive finish in the end by Kurtzer. He's still counting. I thought that the referee had stopped it. He should have done, in my view. Well, he's letting Lacusta get up, and he's now... No, oh my goodness me, I thought for a horrible moment he was going to let Lacusta go on. So did I. I thought, I thought the referee should have jumped in there two or three punches before he took them. Then my last two or three punches. Well... Oh. One horrible moment, I thought, you, I thought he was going to let him carry on boxing. That would yeah. have been horrific if he had a done, yeah. because Lacusta was nowhere then. His senses were scrambled, his eyes were yeah. in orbit, his legs had gone to jelly, he was all over the place. How he stayed on his feet, only he knows. He'd collapsed into the corner. Uh, quite honestly, in my view, uh, one hesitates to criticise referees, but in my view, the count was quite academic. He should have stopped the fight, I think, there and then. Uh, the very notion of letting Lacusta continue to take more punishment uh, I find fairly distasteful. Let's have a look at this again, and Kurtzer did this job well in the end. Yeah, that little scything right. Lacusta comes back bravely with a jab. He's caught with another left, then a right. Now he's gone. He's gone from this point, and it's a wonder, really, that he manages to stay up. He's just taking punches. They're coming from all angles at him. Reality's crowding in again on Ken Lacusta, and once more, he finds himself... The referee out. should have been in there and stopped it before the... Yeah. Yep. Unbelievable, letting him take punches out and, you know, can't defend himself. But Kutzer does his reputation no harm at all on his way up the world ladder. I said beforehand, Lacustre is the kind of opponent you've got to knock out. Well, Kurtzer did it and did it impressively enough. And he may be on his way up the rankings. A second round stoppage for Pierre Kurtzer of South Africa. And that will do his career prospects no harm at all. In a moment, we'll uh, go into the ring and we'll maybe get an interview with Pierre Kurtzer and see what his views are about that. Meanwhile, we await for Billy Keithley, the announcer, to give us the official decision. Here he comes now. Gentlemen, please. Ladies and gentlemen, after one minute, 50 seconds of the second round, as Ken Lacusta was unable to defend himself, your winner from Pretoria, South Africa, Pierre Kutzer. Ladies and gentlemen, your appreciation, you tried very, very hard, he's come an awful long way. Ken Lacusta, ladies and gentlemen, your appreciation, a very, very brave man. So, victory 
for Pierre Kutzer. So I think we can go into the ring now and join Pierre Kurtzer. He's talking with Paul Dempsey. Pierre, many congratulations. Your first time in Britain. Now, we saw a nasty little cut open over your uh, left eye, or, uh, under your left eye. Was that a cause of concern for you? Uh, no, but the, you caught them with, with a very good left hook in the first round. That's what cut my eye there. Were you worried at all? No, not at all. No, it wasn't really... I couldn't... I felt the blood coming down, but... I know it was underneath my eye, no, there's no worries. I have to tell you, you are an unknown quantity with due respect in Britain, but at 29 years of age, people have been saying in the build-up to this fight that this is a man who could get into the world class. At 29, are your best years still to come? Yes, oh yes, definitely. I think so. I think the next two, three years will be my best years. Well, you feels almost 30. Evander Holyfield indeed is, is almost 30. Now, coming into the world class, as you, as you hope to do, from South Africa, you haven't had much experience against top-line European or American fighters for obvious reasons. South Africa's been kept very quiet. But things are changing fast now, so you hope clearly to get more experience against the top men from Europe and the USA. Well, I've fought very, very good and very experienced fighters from the United States already in my career. So I don't think that is really the issue. And uh, I think from here, my manager trainer, Alan Tabu, will, he will guide me now to the right fights uh, towards the world title fight. Have you spent your years through the 20s traveling the world in the way that, say, another good South African fighter, Brian Mitchell, has done? Oh, yes, uh, my last couple of years, my last two, three years, I've been all over the world and I've got a lot of experience against overseas fighters. Uh, a former cop back in South Africa. Is this uh, full-time life for you now as a boxer? Yeah, well, the years that I was in the police was just... I was a PT instructor. I was actually a, a, a carried as a PTI and I went to the police college. Just to train the guys there. It wasn't really a policeman. Okay, so no chance of a citizen's arrest. Thanks very much, Pierre. I hope you uh, do come back to these shores again soon. Enjoy the rest of your stay in Britain. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Here we go. Well, I don't know about you. I thought that was mightily impressive. And for me, he's the best white man in the world, although that's not saying an awful lot at the moment. How impressed were you, John? Yeah, really impressed. He's tremendous. Uh, his power of punches, the way you pick it, and particularly coming up from a bad cut. He knew he couldn't, you know, hang around there. It could have got worse. He went out and did the job. Uh, done the job. He was hanging around a bit in the first round, and uh, the, the cut spared him on. But he finished there brilliant. He didn't hang around much in the second. Let, let's have a look and see how it finished here. Accurate yeah. and powerful, I thought. Yeah, picking these punches, very powerful, very strong, very fit. Great condition fighter. Just picking these punches. He's good looking for the knockout every punch. Now, Beautiful the commentators, commentators, both Henry and Ian, thought that the referee might have come in a bit quicker. What, what do you think? Well, yeah, uh, she could have done. He could have let her go on a bit longer, really. You know, all depends on the other fella. If he really fancied it, he could have let her go on longer. <laughs> but it's difficult to come in, isn't it? If you've you got a big fella like that throwing punches, I wouldn't get in there. Uh, They're pretty clinical punches going in there. That's the moment it was finished. But I was impressed not just by the power of them, but the accuracy as well. Yeah, that's a different class fighter. I mean, Ken's had 15 losses in his career, you know, he's been banged around a bit, and uh, his fellas only had, what, two losses in his out of a 36 fight career, 25 KOs, powerful, conditioned, young, 29, prime, strong, good fighter. Certainly got all the potential in the world to win the world title, especially with that power, so he's a big heavyweight who can punch. Do you think he, he can? I mean, obviously, it's a good time now for heavyweights. It seems that there's one or two, Rudd, obviously, right at the top of the tree, Holyfield there, Tyson. Can he compete with, with those? Of course he can. Heavyweights, especially of that calibre, you see he's got the instinct, he's got the killer instinct. He's a natural fighter. He's a conditioned, methodical, serious fighter, dedicated. You could see the way he's shot in such great shape and picks his punches very clinical, gets them on the hook, doesn't waste nothing, you know? And uh, when he got cut, he didn't want to hang around at all. He knew he had to finish it, and he picked his punches in the second round, and uh, just got rid of the opponent, which really wasn't in the same class at all, like. And uh, yeah, definitely he's got the potential to win the World Championship.